Hey guys, Scratch here. I'm still out in the shop. I just finished up another video that I was doing a generator review, but I wanted to show you guys the all-in-one power station that I had mentioned I was going to build when I was reviewing this top bowl inverter. Now, I decided to build it, one, because the top bowl inverter was so compact. I mean, it's so small for the amount of output that this thing has. I started getting this idea. I'm like, hmm, I could actually build an entire setup, a power station type setup, and build it all on the top of a battery. I don't need carts. I don't need to put it, build it on a furniture dolly like some people do. I don't need to do any of that. I can build a great performing system sitting on top of a battery like this Chin's 280 amp hour. Um, yeah, so I got that thing in my head and I started doing some measurements and I laid it out and it actually turned out pretty sweet and I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, I do have EcoFlows. I've got Delta 2 and extra battery that power my whole travel trailer. Uh, not anywhere near the uh, battery capacity this little do-it-yourself has. Uh, not even close. And this is a lot cheaper. And uh, this also has more output on the AC side. So it's a really cool little setup. There are pros and cons, right? The EcoFlows are a 48 volt battery system. They run much more efficiently. There's a lot of little details, right? But bottom line is this thing gets the job done. It kicks butt. You can use it in a travel trailer, an RV, um, as a primary power source. And you could also pick it up and take it right in your house and use it for emergency power and backup. It is literally a powerhouse little portable generator and it's right here, um, right here on my table. So I'm gonna go through in detail all the features, what I built into this and why I did the things I did. And in the video description is a complete list of every component and everything that I bought and used for this build. And with that, uh, you guys will be able to recreate it piece of cake. This is not expensive. We are talking sub $1,000 barely to build this whole thing out. And you just need a few basic tools and some willpower and you've got this exact same system. You might even be able to go a little cheaper in a few ways, um, but we'll get into that. Let's, uh, let's take a closer look. All right, so let's take a walk around this little all-in-one setup. This will be so easy for you guys to duplicate if anybody else wants to build this. Chins, 280 amp hour battery. These get great reviews. They're the most affordable of the batteries on Amazon. And this one measured 296 amp hour. I can't ask more for more than that. And the BMS is rated at 200 amps and it easily handled its 200 amp rating. So that's a huge win for Chins. I didn't try to color coordinate this. This is being orange and orange. It worked out, but it looks really cool. Not even a big fan of orange, but this actually looks really, really nice. And uh, you can see my inverter is on right now. Walking around here. Let's go through our components. Like I said, the wiring and everything turned out really slick on this. This is so easy to wire. Any of you guys could duplicate this with just a little bit of effort. Blue C Systems, I absolutely trust their electronics and their switches. This is a great switch. It's their M series. It's just an on-off switch. Uh, again, all the links for this stuff are in the video description. And um, this switch comes around and it goes to a fuse. Now this fuse is a 225 amp rated MRBF surface mount type fuse. I gotta say, this is the first time I've used an MRBF fuse before and I really like this. It's hard to tell, but this, this whole assembly just bolts to the battery terminal. And this little fuse looks like a Lego brick and it just sits right on top of this guy. And when you bolt it down, that's how it makes its contact. But these are really slick little fuses. Very popular in the marine industry because of their size and uh, the fuse capacity you can get these in. So yeah, super, super slick. Um, cables all just flowed. It ended up kind of zen-like. It looks pretty good. Uh, go over here. This is a Victron shunt. This is their smart shunt. Love Victron products. And uh, this smart shunt measures everything. It measures power coming into the battery, power going out of the battery. It tells me everything that's going on within an output from the battery itself right off of this shunt. Bluetooth to your phone has a lot of capabilities and it gives you all that electronic input that you would want to know, like your battery charge level and all of that. And it gives it to you with just having a little tiny device attached to your battery and some input and output cables. This is just an old style fuse. And what I did, why this is here, this connector is how I charge and uh, have a power input to this battery. Um, I Put it on the negative on the shunt itself so i can monitor power going back through the shunt and back into the battery and then the positive terminal is just a 50 amp fuse going directly to the positive terminal over here i don't need to don't need to attach it to this fuse at all because it's its own fuse so it's just going going right to the terminal all right so this little quick connect i don't even know really what type of connector this is there's a ton of brands and they all kind of private label them but it's just a heavy duty quick connect 
And this one, I'm forgetting the rating on this. I think this was a, yeah, 50 amp rated connector, 50 amp rated fuse, that's fine. None of my chargers are going to exceed 50 amps, so I'm happy with that. Now, what the reason why I did this little pigtail off on the side is I wanted to be able to quickly disconnect this whole battery and do whatever I want with it, okay? And so the charger that I grabbed, walking over here, grabbing off the shelf, like I said, I trust Victron components. This is Bluetooth. I have a lot of settings in here. I can actually set the charge current. I can set every parameter like Victron always does. Everything is super adjustable and tweakable. I like Victron products. So this is a 30 amp, um, 12 volt, 30 amp rated charger. And what I did is I just made that same quick connect end right here on the charger. So when I want to take this battery inside in my house, I just put this on a timer, a 120 volt timer, and I can tell it when to charge. And because I have AC coupled solar panels, technically, even if I plug it into a wall outlet, I can charge it only when the sun is out or when, when the solar panels are receiving power and it charges off my solar. So, but that's all that is. I'm doing this upside down right now. There we go. But that's all it is, I didn't even do that, almost one-handed, yep, to connect that up. Now, I'm doing the same thing for the travel trailer. I've got a power connector in the travel trailer that I can plug this whole system into, just plug right in there, and then picked up this top bowl. Notice the same brand, the brand Synergy, even though they didn't get their colors quite the same orange. You guys got to match your Pantone colors, that's all I'm saying. But uh, that is a top bowl 40 amp charge controller. It's going to be made it up to my solar panels and it goes back into um, basically back into the system, back into the DC side, and it connects all up through this same port. So again, I can unplug this guy. I don't know if I can do that part up one handed. Yep. And then this being becomes mobile. It goes right to the travel trailer, plugs in and it can charge from my travel trailer. But anyways, that is it, guys. Two handles, rope handles. I can pick this whole setup up. It's a little bit chonky. Gosh, I think it's probably about 80 pounds. I better get a weight on it. I'll put the weight in the video description if anybody cares. But I mean, 296 amp hour battery on this thing and 2000 watt continuous on the inverter. And yes, this does start my travel trailer's air conditioner. No problem at all. Um, now, I'm going to beat myself up on this. So um, a little bit because I'm not perfect. And the one thing I might change up if I was to build this, if I was you guys, I would use a little bit better, a little bit thicker battery cable on this. I grabbed this cable because I had it in a box. This is actually came with my winch that's on my uh, one of my off-road toys. And um, it's two gauge. It's actually a little bit better than two gauge when you measure it out. But it's two gauge uh, cable, all copper. It's quality cable, right? But for the amount of amperage it takes for this to make 2,000 watts, this does start to get a little bit warm. It's not hot, so when I'm at 2,000 watts, it definitely gets warm. Like, it gets to the point where you can still keep your hand on it, but you can tell it's getting hot. So, if I was you, I would at least, bare minimum, go to one gauge if you're trying to save flexibility and so forth. Go to a one gauge cable, or go a little bit better, one zero or two zero uh, cable, two aught cable. So, go to that if you guys want to do it even better than I did it. I'm leaving this here because it works. I'm never really going to hit the 2000 watt rating and it does do the 2000 watt rating on this cable, but you guys can do it better. Like I said, if you wanted to. So again, check the video description. I'm going to link the type of cable I recommend. Like I recommend Windy Nation brand cable. They make some very good stuff for solar and wind and, and uh, off grid type stuff for cabling. Very good. So all copper cabling, but I'll recommend all of those parts, even down to the terminals and stuff that I used. And uh, that's pretty much it. I don't have anything else for you guys on this. I just wanted to share this project with you because it turned out cool. And hopefully, I inspire you to do something even cooler. So that's it. I will catch you guys later.